Peptides are one of the most interesting things that are out there right now in the world of recovery, in the world of muscle building, and even in the world of cognition. And I want to focus today's video on something called TB500, but more commonly known as a molecule in the body as thymosine beta-4. So these are the same things. When you see thymosine beta-4 or TB500, it's the same thing. TB500 is just more commonly the synthetic peptide form. Now, peptides are just strings of amino acids ranging from like two, sometimes up to like 200. Like, so just chains of amino acids, okay? Now, what happens is these chains of amino acids emulate signals or certain things within the body. In the case of thymosine beta-4 or TB500, this is something that is secreted by the thymus in response to injury or even mild trauma, i.e. muscle damage, uh, potentially wounds, potentially injuries, particularly when you get in the world of like connective tissue, so collagen type formation, these things. Now, my personal experience with TB500 is very, very small. Okay, I have just recently been experimenting with peptides myself, uh, but I've looked at the literature for a number of years. The reason my experience is so small is because personally, I had a labrum issue and a torn rotator cuff, and I only needed a couple of weeks of utilizing TB500 and BPC-157 before my injuries were done. So that's my own anecdotal experience, and it speaks volumes to how powerful it worked for me, which is why I'm here doing this video. But full disclaimer, I have no vested interest in any kind of peptide company at all, and you need to exercise your own caution. Talk to your healthcare professional about this. I'm just a dude on the internet. After today's video, I popped the link down below for Thrive Market. Obviously not a peptide company, but Thrive Market is a great place to get all of your groceries, even fresh groceries now. So they have cottage cheese, they have vegetables, literally fresh groceries, everything delivered to your doorstep. But that link down below gets you 30% off your entire grocery order. So whether you're getting frozen, pantry, fresh food, whatever, 30% off your entire order and a free $60 gift. But you gotta use that special link down below in the description. They're a big sponsor on this channel. They have been for, I guess about seven years now and they are the bee's knees when it comes down to getting discounted groceries that you can trust delivered to your doorstep, so down below. So our thymus produces this thymosine beta-4. The hard part is it produces a small amount, and it seems as though as we age, it produces less and less. So the idea behind TB500 is taking something that we know works and giving you a bolus of it. So the purported benefits, I have to say purported because there's very little human model data. Peptides are new, okay? The downside is, is once something actually goes through all these approvals and is core, more common in mainstream, <laughs> well, then it's harder to get. That's just the way it works. But the purported benefits, we're talking things like wound healing, we're talking injury repair, we're talking potential cognitive effects, potential heart cell effects, and potential muscle cell effects. So we'll get into all of that. Let's go ahead and jump right into injury first, because we do have to remember that potentially even recovery from hard workouts can categorize as injury. But I wanna focus mainly on like connective tissue stuff. There was a study published in the journal Regulatory Peptides that took rats and injured their MCL. Okay, so it did some damage to their knees. And what they did is they gave them one microgram of TB500 daily for four weeks compared to a control. The results were very, very interesting. For one, they found that they formed collagen fibrils in a much denser fashion. Okay, so the collagen that was forming the actual ligaments, the connective tissue was forming stronger. In addition to this, they were uniform and they were evenly spaced fiber bundles, meaning things were actually healing in a normal way. And biomechanics were restored much better in the thymosine beta-4 TB500 group compared to control. And the reason I mention this is I want you to imagine you like twist your knee and you tear all the ligaments in it. As you heal up, you might have poor range of motion, you might buckle at the knees, things might not be as good, right? So restoring proper biomechanics to your natural way is a very important thing when it comes to injury repair. And we saw that, at least in this rodent model literature, with TB500. But let's look a little bit more at what might be happening, because there's a study published in the Journal of Investigative Dermatology that found when they looked at wounds, that after four days with TB500 administration, there was 42% more skin and overall like collagen formation over an open wound compared to control. And at seven days, there was 61% more skin and collagen formation over an open wound. So we see that it has something to do with just pro-growth of collagen-type 
tissues. And what exactly is triggering this? Well, the literature seems to suggest that it has to do with angiogenesis and collagen deposition. So we form collagen, but then where it goes is really dictated by some of these peptides in our body, certain things kind of signaling that. Angiogenesis is more vascularization, getting more blood flow to an area. If you had you know, bad circulation to your feet, let's say your feet are always cold or something and you get a big gash on your foot, it's probably not gonna heal really well, right? But if you had good blood flow to the foot, it might heal a little bit faster. That's a very simple way of putting it, but that's kind of what's happening in this case. Then there was a study published in the International Journal of Immunopharmacology, and I found this very interesting. It found that in mice that had sepsis, okay, so serious infection, TB500 actually reduced the mortality rates associated with sepsis and molecularly, or mechanistically, I should say, reduced their different inflammatory responses and cytokines as a result of it. So what that leads us to believe is that there's an anti-inflammatory effect, which makes sense because I felt much less sore, I felt much less stiff when I was taking TB500. And personally, I noticed that, you know, anecdotally, like my heart rate variability was better. Like my overall recovery and potentially inflammation was lower. So there's something going on there. But let's pivot for a second. Let's talk cognition though, because this is where we get fringe and where there's not a ton of data, but it's promising on effects on the brain. So in this particular case, we look at a study published in neuroinflammation, and this was done on mice once again. But in this case, they overexpressed thymosine beta-4. So essentially they triggered their genes to produce more thymosine beta-4. TB500. So in this case, they were triggering the body to almost create its own peptide more. Okay, what they found with this was pretty impressive. They saw massive decreases in beta amyloid plaque formation, which I know there's question as to whether this has an impact with neurodegenerative conditions or not, but one thing we do know is that it's correlative. There's definitely something going on in neurodegenerative conditions that is causing buildups and changes in amyloid beta plaque levels. So the fact that it reduced that demonstrates that maybe it's combating neuroinflammation to a certain degree, but we can investigate this more with more literature. So if you look further at this study, you find that there's increase in neuronal function. Okay, so the neurons were firing better, but it also restored the microglia activity back to a normal level. Microglia is sort of the, I don't know, you almost want to call it the immune system of the brain in a way, like these cells that affect that. Well, sometimes they're elevated, sometimes they're not elevated, and if they're elevated, an overactive brain immune system is not good either, increasing neuroinflammation. So if we restore that back down to a lower level, then we're in a potentially better spot. So that seems to be what's happening. Now, we can dive into this more. On the side of neuroinflammation, there's evidence that suggests that it reduces what is called toll-like receptor 4. And I want you to think of toll-like receptor 4 as literally like a toll booth. And when a pathogenic material passes through this toll booth and it triggers this process, this toll booth actually says, hey, we need to activate other immune responses. There's also a decrease in nuclear factor kappa B, which is sort of a genetic marker for inflammation that is top down an inflammatory response. So very promising stuff in the rodent model research. And if you look at the images on the screen right now, there's some really cool stuff that you can see there. It's complex, but I'll break it down simply. Essentially, this chart shows that thymosine beta-4 modulates reactive oxygen species, lowering the oxidative stress in the brain, ultimately potentially lowering neuroinflammation. Again, rodent model literature, nothing in humans, but that's where this stuff all starts. And you have to be willing to kind of read between the lines a little bit if you're interested in this kind of stuff. Let's pivot now to something that's very new in the in vitro world, but still promising, and that's heart cell health and heart cell repair. This study was published in the New York Academy of Sciences, and it was in vitro, but I'm going to read a quote from the study directly. It says, thymosine beta-4 is the first known molecule that's able to initiate a simultaneous myocardial and vascular regeneration after systemic administration. Essentially what this means is it prevented cardiac muscle cell death and increased angiogenesis. This is exceptionally promising for myocardial infarction, for potential heart attacks, for where heart tissue can die. Essentially it's protecting heart tissue, but it also might actually regenerate and re-stimulate regeneration and repair. So, especially with angiogenesis. Now, this is where I have to insert a disclaimer because angiogenesis is not always a good thing. Too much angiogenesis is problematic. Like if you thicken heart tissue, that's not necessarily good, right? So is it speculative that maybe thymosine beta-4 wouldn't be good for someone that's training heavy VO2 max stuff? Would you train your heart too hard? That's a theory and it's realistic. 
And I kind of talked to Andrew Huberman a little bit about this offline, not to put him on the spot, but he said just the same thing to me. He's like, we were talking about BPC-157 and thymosine beta-4, and he, he mentioned just those words. He's like, too much angiogenesis is not always good. So off the record, I'm not you know, a clinician. It's wise to talk to your doctor about this and really only push for short stents because I do not see a practical application where BPC-157, TB-500, and these other regenerative angiogenesis vascularizing peptides should be used ongoing. It just doesn't make sense. It's not a safe thing if you ask me. We will talk about a safety study, however, in just a moment, but let's pivot over to muscle recovery because I know I might be interested. Like, is this going to have steroid-like effects? Can it help me recover? Well, there's promising research in a certain body of mice, but let's take a look. This study was published in PLOS1, and it took a look at dystrophin-deficient mice. Dystrophin-deficient uh, mice, or dystrophin deficiency. Dystrophin helps signal muscle repair. It helps signal muscle growth, repair, recovery, regeneration, but it's also heavily involved in sort of the recovery from contractile trauma. So if it like, if a muscle contracts too hard, so basically it's really hard for a muscle to grow and repair. So in this case, they gave these mice a pretty hefty dose, 150 micrograms of thymosine beta-4 two times a week for six months. Now, it did seem to offset almost all the negative effects of being dystrophin deficient. They found that there was a significant increase in the number of muscle regenerative fibers. So the muscle was able to start repairing itself better. Now, could this be effective in humans? I mean, if the literature translates directly from rodents to humans, it would be, but we don't have that literature just yet. But this is very promising because if there is a muscular issue or a deficiency somewhere that makes it hard to build muscle or atrophy, this could be very, very promising. So more science needs to be done here. Now let's talk side effects for just a second. The most common side effects are gonna be headache and nausea, and those are gonna happen shortly after administration. But ongoing, what people seem to claim is they seem to have performance while they're working out or exercising, but they seem to get exceptionally tired after exercising. Now, it's not a huge amount of people that are experiencing this. And again, the literature is weak. We don't have a lot of data, so we can only take what we've got. But that does kind of lend us to believe that maybe like recovery mechanisms are being stimulated and triggering you to be more fatigued. Now, let's talk about a study that looked at safety so I can leave you on a good note. There was a study published in the Journal of Cellular and Molecular Metabolism. It took a look at 30 individuals that did single dose and multi-dose thymosine beta uh, or thymosine beta 4 TB500. What they did find with this is that the side effects were so minimal that they were able to claim that TB500 would be safe to utilize in an ongoing human clinical trial for longer term. So basically, you got to start with this stuff to see, is this stuff going to just kill people? Is it bad? And if not, like, how safe is it? And they deemed it to be quite safe enough to be able to go through with clinical trials. So promising effects that it's probably not super harmful, but again, this is very new stuff and it's a virgin territory. So I encourage you to talk to someone that is a professional about this. I would recommend someone like Dr. Kyle Gillette. That's the guy that I use. He's very, very trained in this. Merrick Health is another one that really knows a lot in this category. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.